Uh, Nevin, uh, thanks a million for joining me first of all. It's a pleasure to get to talk to you. You're very welcome to Black Lion and it's a pleasure to have you here. I've been watching your videos, so well done to you. It's a great idea. Thank I'm you. delighted to be part of it, so thank you. Lovely. Um, so Nevin, we're going to start. Bring me back to the, the beginning. Uh, what was food like when you were growing up here as a, as a young lad in, in Cavan? So I'm from a family of nine, five boys, four girls. Um, my mother was a great cook my mother Vera and my dad Joe. So they bought the building, not this building where we're in now, just next door, um, in 1965 for a thousand punts. It was a lot of money at the time. It was an old Garda station and then mum opened up a restaurant and she'd done accommodation. I think we might have had five bedrooms. So we, we started off having the restaurant, my mum was cooking. Uh, from the age of 12, I knew cooking was for me. I was helping her. Uh, I was doing very basic things. It's it's something I've always wanted to be. Even when I was in school, first of all, I was the first boy to do home economics. Um, cooking for me was, was my love, my passion. But it was really from my mother. I remember baking with her flapjack, shortbread, apple tarts. Um, for me, food is my life. And I've grown up, I've grown up in, the, in, in the restaurant, so I knew the hard work and sacrifices that my mother, my mother worked so hard, long hours. Smoked like a dream, bless her. But she was a, she was a great um, inspiration to me and taught me really, really good to respect your staff, to really be careful where you're buying food from, like a local butcher, seasonality. And I suppose really food has changed a lot, but the core values haven't changed. You know, good food, local staff, local uh, produce and uh, seasonality. I think they, they tick all the boxes. Perfect. And you went into the industry uh, quite young to train to become a chef. Uh, what was it like going into the industry back then in probably the early 90s you know, yeah. compared to, to now? Oh, it's changed an awful lot. I remember my first kind of work experience was in Roscoff when they had their Michelin star. Mm -hmm. And my, my jobs there, I remember, I used to go in at half nine, leave at maybe 11 o'clock at night. So I used to uh, empty the bins, saw bones for stock, um, scrub the cooker tops, uh, pick herbs, uh, peel langoustines. I peeled so many langoustines, my fingers used to bleed. I used to go there on a Monday to Friday during college. Uh, for I, I worked, worked there for three months, and then I came back every weekend to work with my parents here in the restaurant. Uh, it was a hard kitchen. It really opened my eyes into a really tough uh, kitchen. So I used to go to bed with cookery books. Food was my absolute life. It still is, but it's diversified. Do you know what I mean? I have so many different things going on, which I love, by the way. And yeah, I mean, again, never did plan to be like that. But I, I love being in my kitchen. I think that's really important to be there for your customers. Yeah, well, um, you said you, you never really dreamt or you never envisioned 15 cookbooks and TV <laughs> series and all this. A lot of young cooks uh, today do envision that. And a lot of guys get into this industry because they maybe see the likes of yourself and, and other guys and they see that they can do that one day. Do you, what advice would you give them guys, the guys that maybe want to be TV chefs one day? Do you know, it's something that I never planned. It's something that happened. I, I won the Bailey's Young Chef. I won the Wedgwood Chef of the Year. I was known, Egan Rony Dessert of the Year. I won lots of awards when I was very young and I got a bit of a reputation, you know, for awards and, and, and different things. And for, for young people like watching my shows, that's great. Um, I, I noticed that definitely, Evan, uh, with my cookery demos when I go around the country, whether it's at Bloom or different shows that I do, Taste of Cavan, like for example, the amount of young people taking an interest in food, which is good, and that's a positive thing. Will they go into our industry? God, I'd love it. And so transition year is an important year because what we do is try and bring up transition year students into our kitchen, yeah. and they come up for a few days, and they say, you know, they say, oh God, I love it, and I want to be a chef, or they say, no, it's too hard to work. And that's okay too, because they're young. Because huge opportunities in food, whether it's food styling or, or food development, product development, you know, being a chef, you can, you can, the world is your oyster. I think getting the, getting the basic skills. And as I said to you, I never set out to be in television. That's not what, um, I'm privileged. I never take it for granted. It could stop like that. I've done 150 uh, cookery shows with uh, David Hare, who's an absolute gentleman. He knows my strengths, he knows my weaknesses. And I've learned so much. And he's a really good man. He's a really good, wholesome man. I work with the same crew. There's five of us in the crew. And I've done every single program with them. And we have such fun. We have such fun. Do you know that? And hopefully that comes across. You know, that uh, now the pronunciations, I'm afraid I struggle with maybe when it goes to Spain or Italy because I'm not very good at languages. But when it comes to food and learning and showcasing a really good chef, whatever he's doing, I hope I can inspire people to enjoy that. I think that's important. So you really kind of speak highly of the industry and you, you, you firmly believe it's a great industry. Um, there has been a lot of negative talk in recent 
years about the industry, about long hours, hard work, uh, poor working conditions, all these type of things. Like, do you really believe that it is a f an amazing industry and that's it and there's no problems with it? Or oh, no. No, er every, every industry has problems with it. And I think it's an industry that is evolving and changing. The days of 12, 14 hour days, that's, that's I, I think, a thing of the past. We've worked really hard here in our restaurant to work on, on our chefs' hours that they do have uh, two and a half days off. And, and that's really important for them. They come in, they start at one, they have a break between four and five, and they finish maybe 11, 30, 12, it could be 12, 30 in a Sarda. Um, that they're happy, that they're, because they need a life outside this, because it will swallow you up. And people sometimes aren't prepared to work those hours. You might do it for a wee while. Like I remember when I worked in um, Luxembourg, I worked with a one Michelin star chef, Leah Leinster, the only woman to win the Boca's door. She was fabulous influence on my career. But I went and I worked for her for three months without getting one penny. My parents had to send me money. I got free accommodation. I got free food. But I was there to learn. You can't, you can't um, buy that. When I worked in uh, Arzac in San Sebastian, three Michelin stars, they have 29 or 27 chefs. I think only maybe eight or nine of them were getting paid. The rest of them were there for a year for free. So, you know, I go into kitchens and I learn. I take what's good. Um, and I think we do have a very good industry. I think there's huge opportunities there. You look at the selection, the variety of restaurants that we have. But if we don't look after our future chefs, mm. we're going to have nothing that's as simple as that. So if you're not good to your staff, they're not going to stay. And why would they? they? But they need to feel part of the success. You treat them like family. And that's what I learned from my mother when I told you. I learned about cooking, but I learned how to treat staff. Respect is a huge thing. And in this industry, and I've worked in kitchens where they'd be roaring and shouting and disrespect. And I remember like working in Roscoff's and, and this girl was crying every night in the kitchen. And I said, wow, this is crazy. This is not right. Yeah. And it opened my eyes. So you take good things from kitchens and you take bad things and you learn, no, I'm not putting this into my restaurant. This is not the way yeah. I, I, I work because it's, it's too hard of a life. As yeah. you know, you have to be committed, enjoy what you do. Life is too short. Yeah. So like, because I think it's well known certainly within the industry, but maybe even outside as well, that you are very good for your staff. Like, I think that, that's a well-known thing. Your, um, your, uh, the, the length of time they stay kind of proves that. But w can you kind of sum up, like, because w what, could you kind of give some key points? Yeah. What, what would it be? Would it be respect? It'd be respect. It'd be investing in them. So if any of my team, like, I have a couple of chefs with me, want to go to college, no problem. I'll pay for their course, no problem. I'll invest in them. Um, we do meal experience. I'll give an example. So what we do is we kind of pool our tips or whatever like that, or I'll bring them away to lovely Patrick Ebo's or bring them, we've been to London, we've been to Royal Hospital Roads, we've been to Edinburgh, we've been to Barcelona, we've been to Rome. So we'll go for two nights because we're closed Monday and Tuesday. We won't stay a five star, but we'll stay in a nice maybe travel lodge, but we'll eat in some of the best restaurants. Yeah. We'll go to food markets. That's important for my team to develop them for us to and to bond. And I think it's a way of thanking them and it's a way of um, inspiring them to see, wow, well, look at oh God, wouldn't we love to be doing that? You never, when you go to a restaurant, you see something you don't want to copy, but you get inspiration. I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. And again, it's team, it's team building. So they feel that you're investing in them and you know, it's, it's not work, it's sociable, it's learning, it's eating, a bit of drink too. And that's all part of the fun. So I think that's really important but it has to start from one thing respect what do you think of, of Irish food like where, where do you think it kind of sits because you're a very well-traveled man as well so you would see different foods and uh, cultures from outside where, where do you think Ireland is actually at half? I've and seen it flourish incredibly well and you look at the work like uh, Myrtle Allen got be good to her, Darina Allen, uh, JP over in Gold McMahon, he, he, he's a phenomenal guy. Uh, there's some amazing people that are doing unbelievable work. So if we take Ireland, I mean like all chefs now we want to use local and support local and that's the core to good food, no matter what, seasonality. Um, we have some amazing producers. So outside, like I've cooked in Japan, I've cooked in America, I've had great opportunities and to showcase now Irish food there and people think, oh, wow, we're very lucky, we're a small country, but we're seen as a very clean country, as very um, good people uh, with our work ethic. I think that's really important because for me, food producers, it's, um, they're passionate, they care, they work hard, and we need to show that we need to put them up on a pedestal because we have some of the best beef, lamb, meat, fish, dairy, cheese, you name it. We're chefs, Evan, and we know if you don't start off with the right ingredients, 
you can't cook good food no matter how good of a chef you are so we're very lucky that we are a small country but outside um ireland we're seeing like look at food in the edge what it's done for the reputation among the uh, kind of like um hospitality industry so people now are changing their perception like you go to america and they go oh, irish food is bacon and cabbage and it's corned beef or whatever it is but no it's exciting time uh, um very well-known uh, Michelin star chef in England, I'm not going to name him, but he once told me that um, Ireland has amazing producers and ingredients, but uh, pity nobody can cook them, <laughs> so they don't have great chefs. But what, what do you think about that? Like, do you think they're... No, I totally know? disagree. Yeah. Uh, I think because I know from my TV shows and I know from eating out and I love my food and me and my wife would go all over the country and along with my team, we're in a good place in Irish food. If you were to ask me that maybe five, six years ago, I'd probably maybe name maybe 10, 12 restaurants. Right. Now we could name 50 top restaurants or 100. Yeah. Uh, and you see, good food, it's not all about fine dining. It could be a simple cafe. It can be a simple place for lunch. Uh, good food is good food once you start off with good ingredients. So I would love to bring that chef back over to Ireland and show him because there's some serious creative chefs now who are innovative, who are cutting edge, who have travelled and came back, or always not travelled, but yeah, it's a great time. Like you look at Dublin, great city. My God, the competition there is phenomenal. There are so many great places to eat. And I go back, great value. I think there's great value in Ireland. You know, comes from the from from your nice wee drink, whatever it's wine or a beer or whatever like that, or a, a nice uh, dinner or lunch. I think there is great value still. Right. Um, I'll finish up on this one, uh, Nevin, because I know you're you've a busy night ahead. Mm -hmm. You're fully booked. Um, you have a lot of young cooks that come through your kitchen all the time. What what one piece of advice would you give to a young cook that maybe wants to one day be in your shoes? And <laughs> um, be keen to learn. Uh, begin to work hard and um, show respect humility is a big thing if you make a mistake i make mistakes every day and learn from it nothing wrong with mistakes don't beat yourself up over it and um, respect and be keen to learn ask questions and enjoy what you do life is too short if you're not happy in a kitchen go into another kitchen every kitchen is different every restaurant is different the dynamics of a kitchen is different and that comes from the head chef or whoever's run it or the owners or proprietors uh, for us it's about uh, respect and just uh, appreciating your, your team. Uh, treat them like family. It's not about I and me, it's we and us. And that's the way I've always said it. When, when guests say about uh, the meal experience, I said, listen, I'll, it's the team and it is. I always acknowledge that because they're the ones that put their heart and soul. And they've been very loyal to me and I can't thank them enough. Well, perfect, Nevin. Gentlemen, yeah, it's an great to see you. Thanks, Keep up the great work, Evan. Well done. Thank, thank you. Much.